Hey, good afternoon everyone. Brian Fisher from Fisher Fast here. I have another 2005 Mercedes-Benz SL55 AMG. This particular example has just under 30,000 original miles on it. It's finished in iridium silver with the light gray interior. This particular car has some nice modifications, performance, and aesthetic. And also a ton of recent maintenance was just done on it in the last 200 miles. The entire car has basically been going through front to back. Uh, I'll flash at the beginning of the video here what's actually been done to it so you can get a better idea just how much work, uh, time, and money has been put into this car to bring it back to the level of where you'd expect one of these would be. Right now, I'll just do a quick walk around of the interior and exterior, and then talk about some of the modifications and maintenance as we take a walk around it. The vehicle has just had a full interior and exterior detail, including a two-stage paint correction. The paint looks flawless. There's some of the modifications on the car. The first and one of my most favorite is that the headlights have been revised and reworked a little bit. They now look much more aggressive as the internals have been painted in a satin black. The bezels were painted in a heavy metallic silver and the trim rings around the actual projector bulb is in a gunmetal gloss. 
The internals of the headlights were also reworked a little bit and these lights now put out over double the lumens of these stock headlights and also have a very sharp uh, cutoff so it doesn't look just like a, a halogen bulb which some of these older projectors do. It has a nice, uh, like I said, sharp cutoff line and you can see for miles down the road these things are very bright without being ridiculous. Moving on over the single fin grill here really updates the front end makes it look more aggressive I took it a step farther and I painted this bar or single fin in the front in the same gloss gunmetal as the trim around the projector bulb and you can see it ties in very nicely it's very subtle but aggressive at the same time It does have the clear side markers up front, which kind of disappear into the bumper now, instead of standing out like the orange ones. The wheels, factory 18 inch wheels have been replaced by these beautiful stance rotary forged wheels. These are a 20 by 9 in the front and a 20 by 11 in the rear. And it is a dual brushed gunmetal finish the very high gloss these wheels believe it or not are actually lighter than the stock Mercedes wheels but yet at the same time also stronger so it's a win-win the tire size is a 255 35 20 and a 295 30 20 so you're not getting the super small rubber band tires you don't have to go down that low these are going to give you a little bit more cushion and the ride and comfort. Inside the wheel well here, I took the stock AMG calipers. They were completely disassembled, rebuilt with new piston seals, dust boots, and brake fluid was flushed out. And they were powder coated in a metallic candy blue that really glows under the sunlight. The brakes were all just replaced, front and rear rotors, all pads. So you have brand new brakes, brand new tires on all four corners. Like I said, just check out this the condition of this paint on this thing. It's amazing for the age of it. In the sun, it really just pops. I said in the rear here you got a 20 by 11 and this has a very deep concave profile to the wheel so it's not flat or flush with the edge of the wheel it actually sinks into the middle of the wheel this gives it a very aggressive look to it maybe I'll show you like this we'll start at the front and just slowly walk around so you can get an idea just how deep this wheel actually sinks in That looks awesome. Moving along to the back. We have a carbon fiber lip spoiler reminiscent of the SL63, which is the first SL that wore this similar style spoiler. Again, it's subtle, but aggressive. So we're just improving upon the original without getting too crazy. Under the carbon spoiler, we have the clear third brake light assembly, also reminiscent of the SL63, 2009-2011. Down below, we have a carbon fiber rear diffuser. Really updates the rear end of this car. Gives it that aggression that it desperately needed. The exhaust tips have been reworked a little bit and they were pulled out from the rear bumper and pulled down as well so they're not tucked in underneath of the uh, diffuser here and they're perfectly centered left to right up and down on the rear these 
triangle pieces to the left and the right of the back window glass. Have both been replaced with brand new pieces. These always are faded and chipped whenever I get these cars. So these have a fresh new pair OEM pieces on there, look great. And back at the front again, we also have a updated Mercedes-Benz emblem. The original emblem is a blue and chrome silver uh, color. This one is chrome and black to go with everything else on the car that is obviously chrome, black, and gray. Gives it, again, it's just going for that subtle, you know, subtle aggressive is what we're looking for. Take a look under the hood. Little trick, if you pull down, pull this latch right here and towards you while you're pulling down on the hood just a little bit. You can put this in the service position, which then opens a full 90 degrees. Just about 90, pretty close. Under the hood, we have some more custom touches. The surge tanks have been powder coated in the same gloss candy blue as the calipers. And then also underneath of the air boxes, you can see that the valve covers as well got the same treatment with the candy gloss blue color. The air boxes themselves and the front engine cover here were also, these were actually painted in the Dizinho uh, Mercedes color that came on the launch 2012 C63s. So it's a satin finish on the air boxes and engine cover here. I left this chrome. The supercharger itself has been polished just a little bit has a very nice shine or sheen to it, especially in the sunlight, as opposed to being a dull gray from sitting. Up under the front, we also have a 77 millimeter clutched pulley, which you can see a little bit right here. This is gonna add about three pounds of boost over stock. There's a UPD belt wrap kit to help minimize belt slippage from running more boost. The car has a brand new crank pulley installed down at the bottom. These always, no matter if the car has 10,000 miles or 90,000 miles, as long as it, if it's in this 2000 era, the crank pulleys will separate from age. The rubber in between the actual pulley and the base that it sits on deteriorates over time. So this is a good thing to have replaced, expensive part. I split the cooling system for the supercharger from the factory. It is tied in together with the cooling for the engine. And that hot fluid from the engine mixes at some point, uh, just a little bit. It's not a full 100% mix uh, with the supercharger cooling. So now it's completely separated on two different circuits. This is the reservoir you would use to fill your supercharger coolant here. Engine coolant goes in here now. So you're gonna keep these intake temps down since that coolant is now separated. The pump for the supercharger coolant, which lives behind this fog light, has been replaced with a Pierre Berg coolant pump, best in the business. That is wired to run 24 seven whenever the key is in ignition two or the car is running. So that fluid is always gonna be constantly flowing through the system, trying to keep those intake temps down. 
So it has brand new spark plugs, valve cover gaskets. Brake fluid has also been flushed and filled, as mentioned. The transmission fluid has also been drained and refilled with 12 quarts that have been cycled through the system. It doesn't hold quite that much. You want to get every last drop of the old stuff out of there and flushed with new fluid. We'll go ahead and start her up. This vehicle does have the push to start on the gear selector here. So all you gotta do is have the key in your pocket. Put your foot on the brake. Push to start. The odometer is showing 29,486 miles. In the interior, I also did some more custom touches. Maybe let's put down the roof first and then I'll talk about those. Put down the roof, you just pull up on the latch here and pull it towards you. And now we have retractable roof open. On the inside, I did a little bit of maintenance here as well. The screen uh, had some pixeliz pixelization on it and just a little bit of fading. So I replaced the screen. The screen is brand new now. So you have a nice fresh screen in there. Don't have to worry about any of that, which always happens with these 2005-2011 uh, uh, screens that they put in here. I took the standard wood trim that came on the door panels on both sides as well as the center console area here. The wood trim was refinished with the same gloss gunmetal paint that you can find up in the front of the car on the grill and in the headlight assembly. So again we're tying everything together here. We have a performance package steering wheel from one of the P030 SL55s. So this steering wheel is much, much thicker uh, line than the stock steering wheel. It has Alcantara on the top portion and the bottom portion as well. And this steering wheel makes a huge difference uh, just in terms of driving enjoyment. Whenever you get in the car and you're sitting there, what's the one thing you see Every time, every minute you're in the car, you're, you're always touching the steering wheel. So having something a lot nicer than that really thin uh, st stock steering wheel makes a huge difference, and that's a very nice uh, yeah, touch to have. <clears throat> Let's check out the driver's seat. Hardly has any wear on it, as you'd expect for the mileage. It looks almost new. All of the leather in this car has been cleaned and renewed with Zeno leather products. It has a very, very good smell, not over the top, but it smells like a new leather jacket or handbag. Same thing with the driver's uh, passenger seat. Barely any wear at all, if any. This thing looks brand new. Even the center portion here is not creased. The bolster is like new. It has brand new floor mats, OEM Mercedes floor mats on both sides. They were just put in yesterday. Glove box, you have a nice big area in there as well. And the same thing you can see on the door card here. That nice gloss gunmetal accents carries through to the insides I was talking about. to the trunk when the top is stowed in the trunk you wouldn't think that there would be too much cargo room and you're you would be wrong because there actually is a lot in here for what this car is so once the top is done and you want to get underneath of the top to get something out you may have in there 
you just press this button on the right side the top moves up and out of the way you pull the partition tray up and back now you have all that access to the whatever you may have inside of this trunk area here it does have the factory cargo nets installed as well so you can put groceries or something under here that you don't want to be rolling around while you're driving underneath of the cargo tray here there is a full uh, no, that's not a full size you have a small spare tire which a lot of the SLs did not come with so it does have that as well something else for the performance modification the vehicle also has a revised or reworked exhaust system it isn't too loud it's not too aggressive it just gives it a little bit more sportiness to it it does have an x pipe with three inch piping in the center section of the exhaust it's going to give you a, a tiny bit more power a good amount more sound smooth out the pulses and the flow make it sound a little bit more european as it should The suspension has been lowered about one inch from stock. The nice thing is you have the ability to control that. If you think it's too low or you don't like the ride quality, all you have to do is go into here to the center console area. This button will raise your suspension up. You have two height settings. Right now it's in the absolute lowest. So you have two above that. You have one, two vehicle will raise up and it'll give you about that inch of suspension travel back that we lowered so now this is about a stock height vehicle here you can see the wheel gap has gotten bigger when I push that suspension is in good working order the filter has been replaced within one of the new uh, I believe it's a 3m 3 micron filter you go back down, it's going to take you back down to right now. The engine mounts have been replaced with engine mounts from a Black Series uh, CLK 63. They're a little bit more firm, a lot more durable, so you're not going to be replacing the engine mounts. Transmission mounts has been replaced. And like I said, just front to back, the car has been gone through. Uh, having owned you know, 15 to 20 of these vehicles now, I know where the weak points are. I replace everything that I think may be a little bit compromised or wear for age, even if it hasn't completely failed yet. So this is going to be a turnkey vehicle that you can get in and drive, enjoy, not have to worry about it breaking down or doing any expensive maintenance to I'll we'll take a walk around the car with the top down just to show the difference. Go ahead and put the top back up. Before I do that, I'll show you the factory installed windscreen. To raise that, you would just raise the roll bar up with the two buttons underneath of the convertible top latch. 
but this will put it up. This is when you're driving on the highway or higher speeds. You want to cut down on the wind buffeting. You put this up, and it definitely does make a difference in your the wind buffeting that's coming through the cab of the vehicle. This is actually a hard piece to find now. This is um, a nice thing to have. Put it back down. You just hold this button in. That works independent of the top, obviously. You put the top back up. You push forward away from you and hold it in. As with all SLs of this area, it does have a very nice Alcantara lined headliner uh, visors and side pillars as well. This car was a reconditioned or certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz at one point in time. I can't tell you what year this is from, but you can tell that it has been taken care of and this is a, a very well cared for vehicle if it did go through this process at one point in time they definitely replaced some stuff and, and took care of anything that may have needed when they got that certification directly from mercedes so that's about it if you're interested in this beautiful 2005 sl55 please do feel free to give me an email at fisherfast at hotmail.com or if you would like to build a vehicle like this for yourself please don't hesitate to reach out to me thanks for watching